For more than 20 years now, I've been creating all sorts of electronic designs for either myself or for different companies. I started having this electronics hobby when I was 12 and since then I kept experimenting ways for achieving the fastest prototypes and shortest way from concept to finite product. So in this video I want to share with you some of the software tools and methods I use to get from this to this. I worked for many years as either designing hardware engineer or having other different technical jobs that involved creating electronic devices. So what I learned through the years I can share with you guys right now. Of course everything starts with an idea, a dream and a napkin sketch. I gotta have everything clear in my mind before I start designing and I have to know exactly what my goals are. So that is why I usually write these goals on the initial sketch. I even think of what the case of the design could look like and how big it would be. I would consider this the zero phase of the design. You don't have anything yet, it's just a concept phase. It's like drawing on the ground before you even start digging for laying a foundation for building a house. For the first phase of the design I proceed with creating the electronic schematic from scratch or starting from a previous design. For drawing the actual schematic I usually use deep trace. Of course there are a lot of other freeware alternative softwares out there and I even saw mobile phone apps these days that are pretty good for this purpose. This is a relatively new software at the time but they keep on improving it and every year it turns better and better. They have the freeware version which at this time can create two layer designs and up to 500 component pins. So for this version you don't need to buy a license. You just download and install. I use DeepTrace for creating both the schematic and the layout. The second phase of the design would be simulating parts of the schematic. And for this I use LTSpice. LTSpice is another great freeware software. Of course it has its limitations, but up to some certain frequency limits in transient designs, it proved to be very reliable for me in both industrial and amateur design. I never test full schematics, but I am rather sometimes interested in testing parts of the design. For instance, I could have a bipolar junction transistor being switched by a GPIO pin of microcontroller. That microcontroller unit can only allow a maximum current of 20 milliamps. I want to see how that transistor would behave and how fast could bias at certain frequencies using certain base resistors. For the third part of the design, I go back to deep trace and convert the schematic to PCB. Then I start manually positioning the components, dragging them to achieve clearer paths for traces and necessary clearances around the components. I also take into consideration some basic EMC rules which I am not going to cover in this video. I also keep in mind that some certain components like electrolytic capacitors are sensitive to heat on the long term so I avoid placing them very close to heat concentrated areas. Out of EMC considerations I route the traces manually and then add the copper pores. The fourth stage of the design would be creating the actual prototype. In the latest years I sent the PCB order to one of the online manufacturers like jlcpcb.com or pcbway.com and received them through mail. Once I have the PCBs and basically the prototype, I can start testing it and experimenting with the real design. 
In some cases, adjusting or redesigning needs to happen, so this takes you to a previous stage of the design, and some previous steps need to be repeated in the process. If everything works correctly, the way I expected, I can start the fifth stage of the design and that would be an optional one depending on my design, software writing and programming. I either use the Code Composer, IAR Embedded Workbench or MPLAB X depending on the type of microcontroller I use. After the first versions of the software, I can say that I have a mature prototype that I can use and test. In rare cases, the programming phase turned me back to the schematic phase and I had to start all over again from there due to some severe issues. But usually here is where the real fun starts to happen because I can play with the design and feel like it's coming alive. Before going to phase 6, subscribe to my channel for more technical videos like this one and like my video. And finally, phase 6, I create a proper casing using a CAD modeling tool like AutoCAD, Sculptries, etc. And import the design into a slicing program and then 3D print it. I could mention another important phase to the design and that would be documenting everything. For this I make sure I store everything like a ton of pictures, movies, software versions, hardware versions. Eventually I create a user manual in some cases using MS Word and Paint if I want to publish the design online. So now you know what tools and methods I use as a hardware designer in my daily life to go from concept to finite product. Feel free to share my video with other technical friends of yours and leave your comments below about what tools you use in certain cases.